book here. Oh, we can sing Give Me That Old Time Religion. You know Give Me That Old Time Religion. Y'all know Give Me That Old Time Religion? Give Me That Old Time Religion. Give Me That Old Time Religion. All right, let's sing that. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. Why don't you give me that old? Oh, 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 oh time religion. It's good enough for me. It will do when the world's on fire. It will do when the world's on fire. It will do when the world's on fire. It's good enough for me. Why don't you give me that old, old time, old time religion? It's good enough for me. It will take us all to heaven. It will take us all. It will take us all to heaven. It's good enough for me. Why don't you give me that old time? Old time. Old time religion is good enough for me. All right, Bishop. You ready to go, Bishop? Let's hit it, brother. You enjoy Pastor this morning? Give him a hearty amen, everybody. Amen. What he's going to present to us this evening is even better. All right. Thank you, Dr. Bonner, and good afternoon, everyone. Oh, it's so good to see you. I guess you had a good meal. I know we had a good meal. Oh, yeah, it was delicious. It was delicious. Thank you, Pastor Bonner. I'll say he didn't say nothing. I'm, I'm messing with him right now. <laughs> Thank you. What I wanted to, to say before we get into our study, I think that most of you know that the governor of this state has passed a law that you cannot teach from K through fourth grade and throughout the other grades up to college level, black history as we know it. And um, what bothered me is I, I didn't hear the hue and cry of our politicians and those that are supposed to be there to, as, as, as our body and stand guard, when they see something like that to go in the community and raise awareness about what's going on. If they keep this up <clears throat> and other states are joining with this out in the Midwest, in the red states, <clears throat> if they keep this up, What's going to happen if two generations go by? They'll be saying that Martin Luther King was white and everybody, nobody will know the difference. Your history gives you self-identity. Russians would not have known they were Russians. It was their history that defined who they were. Chinese would not have known they were Chinese. It was their history that told them who they were. If you were born in Africa, then you're African. If you're born in China, then they say you're Chinese. If you're born in Asia, then they say you, you're Asian. And so what happened in June of 19, of 2023, 2022, pardon me, 
2023, they put out and said, nothing can be taught in the schools that produces woke, a woke, a woke act. And whatever woke is, that you know, they, they, it started all with this thing about um, the critical race theory, which critical race theory was nothing about race at all. It was a group of scholars that got together and put together a program that shows how systemically and consistently and habitually Ever since blacks have been in the country of America, we've been discriminated against. We've been marginalized, we've been discriminated uh, in all education, housing, all kinds of ways. And the Republicans took it and politicized it and made it a political thing. They called it woke, which it, don't, it's not, it doesn't even fit. The former president, Pence, said that African history should not be taught to kindergartners because, and I'm quoting him, he said, because little kindergarten children will begin to feel bad about them being white if they're taught African history. Now, saints, if you catch me in an alley and beat me up, and I'm bruised and beaten, and I begin to tell somebody about how you caught me in the alley and beat me up and bruised me up, then I've got to feel, to feel the guilt about you feeling bad because someone said something about what you did to me. This is what it is going on. We cannot tell our story. And now something has just come to the Senate. I watched it maybe about five or six days ago. One senator, I forget his name, I don't know the name of the, of the bill, but they're putting out a bill now that states that there are other ways that black history can be told by other professors, white professors that would tell the story of how they see it. That's been our problem all the time. They've told his story, H-I-S-T-O-R-Y, history, his story, but now it's time to tell our story to reflect the truth of our history history. And so the lies, you wouldn't believe the lies that have been told. Have, have you heard about the situation that happened in Mississippi back during World War II? That they killed 2,000 black soldiers that were on, honorably in the service? They machine gunned them to death. And they kept it hidden for 100 years. You all know about the Tuskegee experiment. And that's why I, I believe a lot of black men are scared to go to, to the doctor. Because psychologically, that stuff is still in the mind. You're scared. And so they banned books. Let me tell you what kind of books they banned, and then I jump right into the presentation. You remember Maya Angelou? I know why Cage, Cage Bird sings. They banned all her books in the state of Florida. You cannot, you cannot teach. There's no books of her allowed in the libraries. You cannot teach anything that Maya Angelou says. They banned the book, The Color Purple. The book is banned. No African bookstores can sell this. You cannot do this in the state of Florida. This book called by Zora Neale Hurston. Their eyes were watching God. This book is banned in the state of Florida by Governor DeSantis and his posse. This book here was a very good book. It's called Anti-Baby Racist. And all it's saying is telling, a little baby is telling them how to accept everybody, no matter what color you are, no matter how you look, no matter what you know your socioeconomic standing is, everybody should be accepted. They banned this book. One white lady got this book banned, and now in the state of Florida, you can't sell it. You can't even do business with this book anymore. They've taken black girl magic. It's not about magic, it's about a, a poem that a girl is writing just talking about 
what happens to her about being pregnant and certain other things, this book is banned. I went into the African bookstore yesterday and I looked at three I don't know what you call it. It's, it's three rows of uh, books, bookshelves. It's over 100 books that are banned. I have the list here with me. Um, they, they, say that again. Michelle Obama's book, Becoming, banned in the state of Florida. Former president's wife, you cannot sell her book. You cannot push your book. Saints, I don't know whether people understand how serious this thing is. When it, when it leaves the public school system, it's going to go to the church school system too. They're going to tell you what you can't teach about God and what you can't teach about blackness. I can teach now about what I'm about to tell you in, in, right here now, but the time is coming when they're going to stop this too. And what you have to understand, saints, if they won't allow you to teach it in the school system, then the church has to pick up the baton and begin to tell, teach it to their children here. Our children are a commodity. What's going to happen if we don't train our children? We must leave our children a legacy. We must tell them the truth. We can't sit back and let this stuff happen like nothing is going on. There ought to be a hue and a cry all across the state of Florida about what this governor is doing. And I'm kind of leery about saying this, that I know this is on TV, because then what they can do, they can target you too. I'm not afraid of anybody. The Marine Corps has taught me not to be afraid. I'm not afraid of the living. I'm not even afraid of the dead, because I know the dead can't hurt you. It's the living that can hurt you, not the dead. But you know, saints, this thing is so serious until if you don't tell your children who they are, where they came from, they don't know where they're going. And that's the thing. This church ought to be packed. From the community, they ought to be, they ought to be here. But it shows you how little interest people have in their own history. What we're talking about today is about what does the Bible say and history say about how Jesus looked? And it's sitting in plain view in the Bible, and nobody wants to talk about it. But the Bible says it's the truth that will make you free. I don't care about any color. Honest saints, I could care less about somebody's skin color. That's, that, that's not my issue. My issue is, as a Seventh-day Adventist minister, I have an obligation to tell the truth. And I want to know what the truth is. That's why I study and I research. I want to know what the truth is because I want to represent God. I would not dare embarrass this preacher by coming in his church and saying something I can't prove. I would not embarrass my God to stand up and tell his people something that I cannot substantiate. It has to be true, substantiated by the word of God and by history and by the DNA as we tried to show you this morning. So let's get into this. I wanted to let you know that this, this situation is not going to change. It's getting worse about these books being banned. And that's taking money out of black people's pockets. And so everybody wants to think that everybody in the Bible is white. Most of your people in the Bible were not white at all. Most of the people in the Bible look like you. Why do you think people hide your history from you? There's something valuable about your history. It must be if they're hiding it from you. You don't hide things that are junk. You hide things that are valuable. Your history is very valuable because your history tells you who you are. Your history gives you self-identity. Let me give an illustration just for a minute. Honey, let me, let me use you if you don't mind. I'm pulling on the spur of the moment. All right, I'm going to ask her a, a, a few questions. What's your name? Uh, it's Tony, but I'm not sure. 
I don't know. Where do you live? I don't know. I don't know. Do you have a grandmother? Um, I, I'm not really sure. I don't know. I don't know. Do you go to church? No, I don't know. Do you know where you are? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what you're asking me. I don't know. She should have messed up my whole thing. <laughs> no, she didn't. I'm playing with her. Thank you. I asked her questions, and to every question she said, I don't know. When you, when you say you don't know, what do they call that? Are you forgetful? What do they call that? Amnesia, right? So what you have is cultural or educational amnesia. You don't know who you are. Carter G. Woodson, the father of black history, says that if you don't know your history, you become a negligible part of society and will soon become extinct because you don't know who you are. When you don't know your history, do you know that if I didn't know who Wesley Bruce was, I would become a negligible part of society because if no one knows who Wesley Bruce is, then Wesley Bruce, for all intents and purposes, does not exist because nobody knows who you are. And that's why your history is so important. It's important to know where you came from, where your ancestors came from. It's very important to know that. I did a, a DNA study from Ancestry, black, black AfricanAncestry.com, and I found that my father and his side of the family came from Equatorial Guinea. They came from the Bubi people, B-U-B-U, and they were some of the indigenous people in Equatorial Guinea. My mother and her people came from Sierra Leone. And so at least, so I went doing some research and trying to find out who my people were on my father's side. I got back to my great-great-grandfather. Uh, he was born into slavery. He was eight years old when they taught him very well. They taught him how to read, write, and do mathematics. And when they moved from Mississippi, they brought him here to Florida in the old Lang Syne plantation down in, near Columbia, South Carolina. And that's where he's buried. I found out he had eight children. And he married into a certain family that helped to build uh, Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. And I went to visit that church. And it's crazy, Pastor, because the people looked like my, my people. We had the same noses. We had the same skin color, and they married into certain families, and we have a big reunion every July. They have a big reunion down there, and when you go there, you, you introduce yourself. My name is Wesley Bruce. My father was Cleveland Bruce. My grandfather was Wesley Bruce. My great-great-grandfather was Wesley Duncan Bruce. And he said, your great, somebody in the audience say, your great-grandfather was Wesley Duncan Bruce. He married my great-great-grandmother. And they tell you what family. So everybody, it's a beautiful thing when you learn your roots and you know where you came from and where you're going. So now, let's get into this. Let's hit the next slide. Do you know who this is? This is the first pharaoh of Egypt. His name is Menes. His name is Namer. And the reason I put him on here is because you see what he has on his head? Doesn't he look like the same thing I have on my head? It's called a Khufu. European and European Americans take off their hats when they come in a building. In Africa, we don't take off our hats when we come in a building. It's just a habit that they have. That's a part of their cultural thing. They take off their hat when they come to the building. In Africa, we walk in with this on because this is a part of my culture. And culture is who you are and the subtotal of everything that you've come to be. All your history and your teaching is what your culture is. 
And so I wear this because it is a part of my, my heritage. And this is the first Pharaoh of Egypt. Doesn't he look like you and me? Does he not? All right, next slide. The Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 11, You men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus which you have seen go into heaven shall so come in like manner if you've seen him go into heaven. Next slide. In 1 John, chapter 4, verses uh, 2, 3, it says, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist where you have heard that it should come and even now already is in the world. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ came in the flesh is of God, the Bible says. Everybody that confesses that Jesus Christ did not come in the flesh is not of God, but is of, of Antichrist. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I say to you tonight, if Jesus Christ came in the flesh, he had to have a color. You've never seen any colorless flesh anywhere on planet Earth. Why are we so scared to deal with the ethnicity and the color of Jesus? It doesn't make sense. Somebody has put into our minds that if you say that Jesus Christ is white, if you say he's not white and you say he's something else other than white, then you, you stand to be reprimanded or you stand to be ostracized or criticized. I don't mind being criticized if I'm criticized for what is true and right. So all the pictures that you see in the Sunday school lessons, in Sabbath school lessons too, Jesus and the disciples are all white. Have you ever seen a nappy-headed angel? Have you ever seen an angel that looked like you? Why not? Because somebody knows something about your history that you don't know, and they don't want you to know about what's going on. If God is fair, and if God is just, we sing the song, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious and in sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Well, if Jesus loved the little children of the world, why aren't you showing me that those children that are red, yellow, black, and white also exist in his church? All you show is white people with blonde hair and blue eyes. And that has messed with the minds of us as older folk and some of the children. Because when now when I start talking about Jesus being black, y'all look at me like I'm crazy. And when I've said that's just a, a figure of speech, I don't mean that literally, sorry. And so what we have to do now, we have to learn to tell, Jesus said he had to have color if he had flesh. So let's hit the next slide. Here's one of the earliest pictures of Jesus and his disciples. This comes from the Ethiopian Christian Coptic Church in Africa. And you see that Jesus and his disciples all look like us, don't they? This picture is 1,800 years old. Next slide. Now, I need someone to read that because I can't see that from from back there. Preacher, can you? Yeah, can you read that? Before we look at Jesus and his lineage, let us go back to Adam at creation, the first man, and see what the Bible says about his skin color. Then we can move forward and discover what the ethnic identity of Jesus was. In Genesis 2, 7, the Bible says, The Lord God formed Adam, the man, of the dust of the ground. Afa <laughs> mehahuga. Y'all know y'all can't pronounce that word either. 
of dust from the ground. Hebrew, the word offer dust means black clay soil. All right, Afar, Meha, Adama. All right. There was red dirt in uh, Adama, land of Africa. But God, according to Genesis 2 7, created Adam, no, Adam, from the black clay soil of Adama, Adama, the land. not what the scripture teaches. The scripture teaches that Adam was created from black clay soil, not red clay dirt. That's it. You, you, yeah. mm -hmm. Black clay soil and at, at Hama, the land, not from at home, which means red skin. Yes. Is that then? All right, next slide. Wait a minute, did, did, did anybody have any question? Did you get that? Because this is a teaching lesson. This is not a preaching lesson. This is teaching. All right, go ahead. Ellen White says in special testimonies. Hold, hold it, Brother Preacher. I got to say this. Ellen White wrote in special testimonies this statement. From 1879-01-19-09-014, describing Adam's complexion. His complexion was neither white nor sallow, but ruddy, glowing with the rich tint of health. All right, hold it right there, brother. Adam, Ellen White said that Adam was not white. This was during a time when all of the General Conference pictures and all the pictures that came out predicted him and depicted him as being white. She said Adam was not white, neither was he sallow. Sallow is a pale yellow color, but she said he was of a ruddy complexion. Ruddy is mahogany. It means reddish brown. So now if Adam was white, ladies and gentlemen, there would be no black people on earth, as I tried to explain that this morning. When two white people get together and mate, and they are intimate, they cannot have anything of color. White is recessive. Black is a dominant gene. That doesn't mean that anybody is superior to anybody. It simply is a scientific fact of truth. And what they did, how could they tell you when they enslaved your ancestors that Adam was black when they say that you were inferior? I also teach a subject called the curse of Ham theory. Boy, when you really learn what the curse of Ham really was, then you really understand how people try to depict and do things that are, that are bad. Saints. It's, it's really bad what they said about, about Ham and about what Ham did, and Ham didn't do anything. Amen. Go ahead, brother. I'm sorry. Since the first people on earth were not white, according to the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, Let's move forward in history and see what the Bible has to say about what the ancient Hebrews, the ancestors of Jesus, looked like. Then by following the lineage of the ancient Hebrews from Abraham to Jesus, we will be able to discover what this same Jesus 
will look like when he returns again. All right, next, next slide. I want you to take a look at this map. I wish I had a a pointer. Do you, do you have a pointer? I should have asked that before, but I didn't. You have a pointer? A pointer. Like a, a light laser? Okay. All I wanted to let you know is that look up near, do you see? Oh, boy. When you look up, will you see the land of Egypt? You see the land of Egypt, right? If you look there, the Suez Canal was dug from 1859 to 1869. It took them 10 years to dig that Suez Canal. That Suez Canal separated this part of Africa from the mainland of Africa because they were looking for a shorter trade route for the spices in India. So what they did, they dug that Suez Canal and in 1947, the journalists that were covering the war began to call that area the Middle East. There's no such thing as the Middle East. If there's a Middle East, show me the Northeast and the Southeast. That area that they call the Middle East, and the Middle East includes Jerusalem, Bethlehem where Jesus was born, Nazareth where Jesus grew up, present day Syria, and certain other parts going all the way to the Tigris and Euphrates River in Iraq and Iran, that area was called classical or Northeast Africa. They could walk there before the Suez Canal was built, dug. They could walk all the way to that land. That was classical Africa. So Jesus was born in classical Africa. He was raised up in Nazareth in, 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 in Northeast Africa. So if you were born in Africa, what do they call you? So Jesus was born in Africa. He was African. I know that takes some time to sink in. But see, the pleasant land mass that you have now, they never show you that that was classical or Northeast Africa. Your ancestors conquered the then known world. I wish I could show you some pictures of black Chinese that I have. I got thousands of pictures, saints, and I can show you black Chinese with nappy hair. They got dreadlocks. I can show you the ancient people in Japan, the Ainu people, A-I-N-U, where you get your samurai warriors from. I went into a temple in Egypt. When we went down into the temple, we opened up into a room just about as large as this. And on the walls, they had all these Africans doing karate. And when they migrated into, into China, southern China in particular, the Shang Dynasty took that Chinese, took that African martial arts with them. And the Chinese or the Asians that were there, uh, the first Asians were black, but people mixed bread, bread, saints. You had a lot of miscegenation going on when people mixed bread with each other. Whites that were there too, and they mixed bread, and they became different colors. Hair texture changed. A lot of things changed. But I want you to know that those first people there were your ancestors. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm, go ahead, Barry. I'm sorry. Did I? Okay, next slide. Can you see it? It doesn't, it doesn't show. That's okay. I'm good. Hit the next slide. I, I'll try to get the next one. Where does the Bible say that Jesus was born? In Bethlehem of where? That's in Micah chapter 5 verse 2. And I want to give you these scriptural texts so that you can take a snap, snapshot of it if you want to. And uh, Matthew 2, chapter 2, verse 1. Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea. So if he was born in Bethlehem, and Bethlehem was in classical Africa, where was Jesus born? He was born in Africa. 
Why won't people tell you the truth? They know that this is not called the Middle East. The Middle East of where? Where is the Northeast and the Southeast if this is the Middle East? That's a misnomer. There's no such thing called the Middle East. But it shows how we believe things and we, we carry on and we don't research it to find out what's really going on. All right, hit the next slide. This is where Bethlehem is. And I tried to show it on the map. That's in classical uh, northeast Africa. That's where Jerusalem is. Jerusalem is in classical uh, northeast Africa. Now you have European and European American scholars who try to tear me to pieces on this, but they can't. Because people who inhabited the land, the land was named after the people that were there. That's why when you go into Afghanistan, you will see a range of mountains called the Hindu Kush Mountains. Kush was the son of Ham. It means that those people dwelt there. That's why in Hindi, Hindi means black. The first people in Asia were black people. I'm having one of those uh, little brain fogs right now, but, but the name of the people, I know the name, I just can't, can't call it to, to memory right now. But those, those first Asians were black people since they, they were there, and I got the picture to show that they're there. Next slide. Next slide. Where's Bethlehem? Next slide. It is in classical on Northeast Africa. Next slide. And that's showing you where Bethlehem is, classical Africa. Next slide. Where was Jesus brought up? Next slide. Matthew 2.23 says what? Next slide. He was brought up in Nazareth. He was brought up in Africa because Nazareth is in Northeast or Classical Africa. Next. And that's where Nazareth is, up near Syria. Nazareth is where present-day Syria is, where they're doing all that fighting now. All right, next slide. Where was Je what was Jesus' ethnicity? John 7.42 says he was the, of the seed of David. He was a Hebrew from the tribe of Judah. He was a Hebrew from the tribe of Judah. Galatians 3.29 and Micah 5.2-4 will tell you that. Next slide. Preacher, you're going to have to help me. <laughs> Who is the father of the Hebrews? Abraham. Where was Abraham born? In you are of the Chaldees. Ur of Chaldees. Where is you are? Pre present day Iraq. Hold, hold it right there, Brother Preacher, because I have to explain this. <laughs> okay. Ur of Chaldees. Do you remember when Daniel was it interpreting the dream for the king and they called for the Chaldeans to come. See, when you read that, you don't know that those Chaldeans are black people that look just like you. They were Ethiopian Kushites. The Chaldeans came from Ur of Chaldee, which was across the Tigris and the Euphrates River into Iraq and Iran. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Who were the Chaldean? Ethiopian Kushite. Kushites were African descendants of Cush, son of Ham, father of the African. All right, next slide. This is what the Kushites look like. Now you know that's us. Look, Saints, look at, and, and, and Brother Barry, uh, Pastor, Pastor Bonner. What does the writing say above his head? Egyptian Nubian contact in the times of Ramesses. 
And what does the scripture say? The scripture says uh, the ancient Hebrews look like the children of Ham. Genesis 42, 8. That's what the Bible says. All right, next slide. What was the ethnic identity of the ancient Hebrews? Well, were they Europeans? No. Herodotus, the ancient Greek historian who visited Egypt in the fifth century BC saw Egyptians face to face as he described them as beings, black skinned with woolly hair. Herodotus also stated that the Hebrews looked like Ethiopians. They had woolly hair, thick lips, flat nose, dark skin. All right, so the, 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 the Herodotus who lived in the 5th century B.C. said that the Hebrews that he saw looked like the Ethiopians. They had what? Woolly hair, thick lips, now, when they say flat nose, they're not talking about this part of your nose. They're talking about this. This is flattened. A lot of other ethnicities have a piece of flesh that comes out here. But Africans have this flattened portion here, and that's why they call it the flat nose. That's how they identify by the skull uh, fracture, uh, the skull uh, shape. And I forget the name of it right now. I'll tell you, my mind is uh, gone right now. Uh, and so he, he described them as being dark skin, woolly hair, flat noses, and thick lips. Do you know why your lips are so thick? <laughs> you know why your lips are so thick? It is because one of the reasons why your lips are thick. There are a lot of nerve endings in your lips. You can feel a kiss better. Y'all don't understand what I'm talking about. But that boy saying got that right. He back there kissing. <laughs> There's another thing I can't say because there are kids in here, and I, I, I would say something, but I, uh, most women, African women, have large hips, and there's a reason why your hips are large. I can't tell you. If you see me after the service, I'll tell you. All right, the next slide. This is a mummified foot that we found in one of the tombs of the pharaohs. Now, saints, if the ancient Egyptians are white, this is a prosthetic toe of a big toe. If they were white, why would they give them a big black toe? I told you I crawled through those pyramids and tombs in Egypt in 2009. We were there for almost a month crawling through those pyramids and tombs. And every pharaoh statue, pharaonic statue that I saw looked like you and me. I, I saw none that looked white. But yet the official position of the Egyptologists is that the 18 Egyptians were Caucasians. That's impossible. Next slide. Here are some Hebrews that were captured by the Assyrians in 660 B.C. Look at the peppercorn hair. Don't you see brothers walking the street that have the same kind of hair today? That's called cultural continuity. We got the same hairstyle that they wore back then. We wear that now. These were Hebrew. Look at the nose and the lips. Herodotus has said that the Hebrews that he saw looked like the Ethiopians. Next slide. These are some Hebrews also. And if you look at the bottom of their, no, you can't see the bottom of their robes from here. But they also, the Hebrews wore a border of blue on the bottom of the robe. This is black and white. You can see where there was a, uh, something there, but you can't see the color. All right, let me give you a close-up of what these Hebrews look like. The next slide. Look at the nose and lips of these ancient Hebrews. 
These are ancient Hebrew saints. I'm not manufacturing this. These are actual pictures of the ancient Hebrews. Some had dreadlocks. Some had the peppercorn hair. As a matter of fact, they, when we were in Zimbabwe, they were doing a study there of the Jews that they found in Zimbabwe. And you know what they found? They found that the Jews in Zimbabwe, they had from the priestly line, thank you, of the priestly line, they found out that those Jews in Zimbabwe, the black Jews who were of the priestly line, they had more priests lying in them than anybody else. Now, what you will see, saints, you will see a lot of stuff on the internet. You cannot believe everything you see on the internet. There are a lot of things about Ellen White, about the Seventh-day Adventist Church you see on the internet that is totally false. And if you buy into it, you'll find that you find yourself in a lot of trouble. You must not only know what you believe, you must know what you don't believe. And when you look at this type of stuff, these are pictures of ancient Hebrews. Next slide. This is an African battle scene, and, and I was just trying to show you that one of them is falling off of his horse or his camel or donkey, whatever that is. I think that's a horse. Next slide. All right. Genesis 42, verse 7 through 8. Joseph looked Egyptian. Okay, Joseph, Joseph looked Egyptian. He's Exodus 4, 6 through 7, Moses at the begin at the burning bush. Hold, hold on just one second, preacher. I'm sorry, that's not you, it's me. Joseph looked Egyptian. Do you remember when the famine came and God told his brothers to go into Egypt to buy grain? When they went into Egypt to buy grain, who was over, over all the food stuff? Joseph, right? Could they recognize Joseph? Ladies and gentlemen, if the ancient Egyptians had been white, it would have been easy to recognize Joseph. But the reason they couldn't recognize Joseph, because Joseph was black just like the Egyptians. That's why they couldn't recognize him. And plus, it had been a certain number of years where they left Joseph there and they didn't know who, they couldn't recognize Joseph because Joseph had on the regalia uh, of the uh, prime minister of Egypt. And let me tell you something, saints. This is something I did when I, I researched it. I found out that when Joseph was prime minister in Egypt, he was prime minister when a people that were not Egyptian had taken over Egypt. That's why when Joseph had died, 250 years after he had died, that's why the Pharaoh who rose up who knew not Joseph enslaved the Hebrews. Because he said that Joseph was the prime minister under one of our enemies. That's why they enslaved them. Saints, there's a lot of stuff that's, that's sitting in plain view that we have to watch. Now, what, what's the next one, Pastor? I'm sorry. Exodus 4, 6 through 7, Moses at the burning bush. Cease to be the mile, the Ten okay. Commandments. Okay. How bush. many of you saw Cease to be the Mill's Ten Commandments with Heston, Charlton Heston playing in it? There's one thing that Cease to be the Mill didn't put in that picture. And I'll tell you why he didn't put it in there. Remember when, 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 when God told Moses to put his hand in his bosom? He put his hand in his bosom. And when he put his hand in the bosom and pulled it out, the Bible says his hand was leprous as white as snow. Well, if Moses had been white, how could his hand turn white? And the Bible says this, when he put his hand back in his bosom, it was as the other flesh. That word other is a coordinated conjunction, means something totally different. Next, Acts 21, verse 37 and 39. Apostle Paul mistaken for Egyptian. The Apostle Paul, you remember, everywhere Paul went, there was a riot when he preached. And this time, Paul had preached 
And there was another riot, so they arrested Paul, and they were taking him to the castle. And Paul said to the Italian centurion, he said, may, may I speak to you for a minute? He said, wait a minute, can you speak Greek? He said, aren't you that Egyptian that took 4,000 people out in the desert and y'all rose up against the Roman government? Paul said, no, so I'm a Jew. A black Jew. A Hebrew. I'll leave that alone and keep going. Acts 14, verses 11 through 13. Barnabas and Paul worshiped as black gods. Barnabas was called Jupiter's Lazius, and Paul was called Mercurius Hermes. Hermes, yeah, or Zeus. You see, most of those gods that the Romans worshiped and that the Greeks worshiped were black deities. Further you go back in time, the gods that they worshiped were black. That's a fact of history, saints. I'm not lying. I wouldn't come in this church and lie before God. I fear God too much to lie. Next. Numbers 12, verses 1, 9 through 11. Miriam turned white with leprosy. If she was white, how could leprosy turn her white? You remember Moses, Miriam, and Joshua, and, and um, Aaron got mad but Moses because he married the Ethiopian woman. It wasn't mad. They wasn't mad because the woman was black because both the Hebrews and the Ethiopians were black. What Miriam and Aaron was mad about, says the spirit of prophecy, is that Moses married outside of the nation of Hebrews and also they thought that Moses was taking power from them. And so what did God do? He struck her and turned her leprous as white as snow. Well, if she'd been white already, how could she turn white as leprous as snow? Next one. Amos 9, verse 7. Ethiopians, Hebrew Israelites, the same phenotype. The same phenotype, the physical look. The Bible says they both look like the same. Phenotype means uh, physical. Next, next slide. Now let's look at the genealogical lineage of the ancient Hebrews, beginning with Abraham, who is called the father of the ancient Hebrews. All right, let's look at this chart then, saints. Next slide. Abraham is the father of the Hebrews. Abraham was black. He's a black Hebrew. Anybody that knows anything about history will tell you the early ancient Hebrews were black people. There's no even debating about this anymore, saints. It's genetically proven to be true. The people that you see in Palestine now came from Palestine out of Europe. During the time of the Muslim invasion of that land, they didn't want to become Christians. They didn't want to become uh, Muslims. So they converted to Judaism and migrated into Palestine. They came from Poland, Russia, Czechoslovakia. That's where they came from. And that's why they look the way they look now. The original Hebrews were black people. The original Hebrews were fleeing persecution. They fled further south into Africa, and they went into Spain. The black Moors ruled Spain for 700 years and gave Spain civilization, running lights, running bath water, sidewalks that were clean. 700 years, they gave them the universities in Cordoba, Spain. Saints, there were no universities in Europe at, at the time that ancient Egypt was going on. Everybody went into, into Egypt to learn and to get the education. Who is the father of mathematics? Somebody tell me. Some of you young people. Who is the father of mathematics? Because my, my brain is fading, <laughs> fading out right now. Can you tell? The father of mathematics went to school in Egypt for 18 years to learn mathematics. No, it was not Socrates. I'm trying to think. It's almost, I can't, um, I can't get it right now. Huh? Not Aristotle, no. 
It's, uh, boy, I, I'm running on the tip of my tongue, but I can't get it right now. Yes, they were, they were very good in math. He said, that's how they were able to build the pyramids. And even they can't even build the pyramids today. With all their technology, they can't build it like they built. Well, Archimedes was not the one, but Archimedes was one of them. It was, it was the one that taught Archimedes. I, I, I can't think of his name. I'm so sorry. Uh, anyway, let me, let me get back to this. Abraham is the father of the Jews. The SDA commentary says, and SDA commentary, Barry, what, that's page 433? SDA commentary, volume 8, page 433. To Ham's descendants belong the Africans, Arabian, Cushite, Ethiopians, and the Canaanite. That's what I'm saying. The Cushites, the Africans, and all of those ites, Jebusites. You see, oh, Lord God, help me. Names change. The Jebusites, before Joshua got in and inhabited the land and conquered them, the Jebusites ruled Jerusalem. They was named after one of the Canaanite sons named Jebus. They called him Jebusi. The Jebusites, well, it was named Jerusalem, but they changed it to Jerusalem. Lord have mercy. <laughs> so now Abraham is the father of the Jews. He married Sarah, but Sarah couldn't have no children. Y'all remember? So he, who did he marry? Hagar, the Egyptian bond servant. In this time, if you married the Egyptian bond servant, then legally that was your wife. So when he married her, if Abraham is a black Hebrew and he married a black Egyptian woman, then Ishmael, their son, has to be black. Y'all looking at me like I'm... Oh. I'm just talking proper genetics. If your mother is black and your father is black... Even with the one-drop rule in the United States of America, you're black. One drop of African blood, I don't care how white you look, you're black according to the rule. Let's hit the next one. Jacob had 12 sons. Leah gave him who? Reuben. Yeah, Judah, go ahead and read them. Levi, Simeon. Issachar, Zebulon. Rachel, the second wife, Joseph, Benjamin. Bilhah, the third wife, Dan, Naphtali. Uh, the fourth wife, Zilphah, Gad, Asher. So Jacob had 12 sons. This is where you get the 12 tribes of Israel from, from these 12 sons. Okay, hit the next slide. They were all Hebrew Israelites. The original Hebrew were an African people. They were black. And what did it say, Brother ba uh, Pastor Barry? Since Jacob was a man of color, Leah, Rachel, Bilhah, and Zephah were women of color. If the father and mother are African or people of color, then the logical deduction would make the 12 sons of Jacob African also. And saints, when I say, when, I, when I'm talking about people of color, I'm not talking about, it does not matter what color you are. See, we are hung up too much on color. It's not the color. If you fall in love with somebody that's white, can you help that? No. And if you marry someone that's white, you're going to have a mixed child, which is beautiful. There's nothing wrong with a mixed child. It is only because racism pervades this country and saints, what you've got to understand, what you're dealing with in America is white supremacy racism. That's what you're dealing with. It is not Al-Qaeda that's going to destroy this country. It's not the Muslim. It's not the other stuff they talk about that's going to destroy this country. It's racism that's destroying this country. That's what's destroying this country. How can you hate somebody because of the color of their skin or the shape of their nose? or the texture of their hair, or the thickness or thinness of their lips. It doesn't make sense. Racism is satanic.
This is why I was telling you this morning what the Lord revealed to me, why Satan hated black people so much. A hundred years of lynching in this country? I got a tape, and I can show it to you, but I have to get parents' permission because it shows you the lynching, how many men they hung, four and five at a time, who said they whistled at a white woman. They kissed and smooched at a white woman, and they lost their life for that. That happened for over 100 years. And now this governor wants us not to teach that because they say that hurts somebody's feelings. Next slide. Go ahead, Pastor. Now let's look at some of the sons of Jacob and see what was the ethnic identity of the women they married. Now check this out, saints. Joseph married Asa, Egyptian. She was the mother of Ephraim and Manasseh. Hold it right there. Genesis Joseph 40. married the priest of On's daughter, Asenath. He married her and they had Esau, no, pardon me, they had Ephraim and Manasseh, right? Am I correct? So now, if, if, if Joseph was a black Hebrew, he married Asenath, the Egyptian high priest's daughter. She was black because the Egyptians were black. Then Ephraim and Manasseh have to be black. They were two of the tribes of the 12 tribes of Israel. Next. Moses looked like an Egyptian, Exodus 2, 16 through 19, Numbers 26, 55 through 59. Okay, hold, hold, hold it. That, that's the end of Moses, right? Do you remember when Moses was fleeing, he killed the Egyptian and ran into the land of Midian? Y'all remember? And Jethro's daughter was at the well uh, trying to water her, her animals. And some herdsmen came and was harassing her and Moses stepped in to protect her. When she went back home, the father said, well, how did you get, get, get home so fast? He said, well, the, the herdsmen were harassing me. An Egyptian helped me. Well, if Moses was white, how could he look like an Egyptian? It's because what the Bible says and what Herodotus says and what all the history says is true. The ancient Hebrews and the Cushites, all of them looked the same. The Canaanites, all of them were, were related. They were black people, saints. What's the next one, Pastor? Moses, okay, Moses looked like All the tribes of Israel were surrounded by Canaanites. Remember, they didn't go to Europe to marry. The tribe of Benjamin, war reduced the tribe to 600 men. Mm -hmm. They married Canaanite or African women, according to Judges chapter 21. Saul, the first king of Israel, was from the tribe of Benjamin, 1 Samuel 9, 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. The apostle Paul was also from the tribe of Benjamin, Philippians 3, 4 through 6, Romans 11, 1. Paul also mistaken for an Egyptian, according to Acts 21, 37 and 38. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Judah married a Canaanite, African woman, okay, King okay. David was from the tribe of Judah. He was ruddy. 1 Samuel 16, 12, 17, 42. Hold, hold it right there just for a minute. Judah married who? Judah he married, married a, Canaanite, a Canaanite African woman. woman. And the Bible says King David was also from the tribe of Judah. Mm -hmm. And he was ruddy, right? Reddish brown, mahogany. Uh, let's see the next one. Ruddy, African, reddish brown. Thank you. That's what Ruddy looked like. Next slide. That's what Ruddy looked like. This is one of the daughters of, of the Pharaoh Akhenaten. That's reddish brown. That's mahogany. That's Ruddy. Next slide. Now, let's look at this. Judah married... Shua, Shua Canaanite. who was a Canaanite. If Jua is a black Hebrew and he marries Shua, then who Fared, comes next? Fared. 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 
Pharez has to be black because his mother and father is black. Now, Pharez marries who? Salmon, a black Hebrew. Salmon, the word salmon means black, and it's also pronounced Zalman with a Z. Zalman, it means black. And so if, if, if Zalman marries uh, Rahab, Rahab, the Canaanite harlot, then they have who? Boaz. They have Boaz. Boaz, the black Hebrew, marries Ruth, the Moabitess, because the Moabitess is a Canaanite. They have Jesse. Jesse. Jesse is the father of David. That's why David was really... Do y'all see what I'm talking about? This is the lineage. And I got this straight out of the Bible, mm -hmm. sitting in plain view. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, uh, Pastor. King David, Ruddy, 1 Samuel 16, 12, 17, 42. Okay, next slide. Then the Bible says King David married Bathsheba. Bathsheba were Hittites. The Hittites were Canaanites. They were of African origin, and they had Solomon. So King David, a black Hebrew, married Bathsheba, who was black. They had King Solomon. That's why we know Solomon was black. Solomon said, I am black. And so they changed it in the scripture. See, because they, they, they take out little commas and certain things. They said, he said, I am black, but comely. That, that's not what Solomon really says. Solomon said, I am black and comely. Not but comely. So Solomon married Naamah, and they had King Rehoboam, Jeroboam, and, 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 and Rehoboam that you read about in scriptures. Those were black people. All the kings, I read it, uh, Pastor, Pastor Bird. Uh, Pastor All the kings of Judah, through this line, you have Joseph and Mary, and then the Messiah, King Jesus. Uh, hit the next slide. Points to remember. Points to consider. Number one, Jesus hid out in Egypt as a babe, Matthew 2, 13. Hold it right there, brother. I got to talk on that. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> when Jesus, when Joseph and Mary were taking, where did, Je where did God tell them to take, me, take Jesus? Take him to Egypt, right? If Jesus had been a little white baby, Remember at this time, Rome was controlling Egypt and Palestine. All they had to say, be on the lookout for a little white baby. They could have easily found Jesus. They could have easily found Jesus if Jesus was white. But the reason why they couldn't find him, because as a black Hebrew, Jesus hid out among the Egyptians who were black. That's why they couldn't find him. Next. Not if he slide. was white, how could he hide out in black Egypt? Number two, in Daniel 7, 9 through 13 and Revelation 1, 14 through 15, Jesus and his father have the same hair. Listen, saints, in, in Daniel, he said the ancient of days, every theologian knows that the ancient of days is God the Father. He had hair like pure wool. In uh, Revelation 1, 14 and 15, he said Jesus was walking among the candlesticks, said he had hair like wool, just like his daddy. And then he said, his feet were polished like fine polished brass as if burned in a furnace. I looked up and researched, I did a word study on that, on that, that, that burnish, burned in the fire. It's malachonite, it's a form of copper that's burned until it's black and it shined up till it's real brilliancy. Well, it, wouldn't you know then in the King James Version of the Bible um, and certain other versions that, that they put out, they'll put, they'll put that as real brilliant, but they don't tell you that it's black. Now, Philip saw Jesus and said, Lord, show us the Father. Philip said, have I been, Jesus said, Philip, have I been so long with you and have you not known me? He that has seen me has seen the Father. What are you talking about, preacher? When God sent his son into the world, he sent him to an African people. He couldn't send a white man into an African people at that time because at that time, 
most people anciently thought that the color white was of the devil. That's why Jesus had to come like he did come. Next. All right, you've already stated in John 14, 8, he that has seen me has seen the Father. All early icons of Jesus and Mary were depicted as Africans. This That's same Jesus is coming back with the same African features. He is not going to turn white when he returns. Next, next slide. Some may ask, Pastor, what does knowing the racial identity of Jesus have to do with my spirituality? As long as the, the mythical lie that Jesus was white remains intact, color never comes in the picture. Our salvation and spirituality are never an issue, but the minute the truth of Jesus' racial identity is even discussed, then color becomes an issue. It's never an issue if he's white. If the color of Jesus doesn't matter when he's white and it doesn't affect our spirituality, then why should it affect our spirituality if he's black? Do you understand what I'm saying? But they make that an issue. I was in a, copying some stuff in a store one day. I was pastoring in Delray Beach. I was pastoring in Delray for 10 years. And I was pastoring in Delray. And um, I was in doing some, some work in the copy shop. And there was a white Christian gentleman. He was very nice until I started talking about Jesus. And he said, uh, are you saying that Jesus is black? I said, I most certainly am. He looked at me, he turned white as a sheet and then turned red. And then he said to me, he stopped talking to me, he got up and left and went somewhere on the other side of the store. I didn't say nothing to him but told him the truth. This stuff is very, very, very <coughs> pastoring in Delray. I had a Jewish rabbi with his yarmulke on. He came and he said, Pastor, I want to learn something about the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I said, okay. While we were sitting in the office studying, I said, Rabbi, let me ask you a question. I said, what do you teach about the ethnicity of the ancient Hebrews without the batting of an eye? He said, they were black. I said, well, Rabbi, I said, let me ask you this. I said, what do you teach about the ethnicity of Jesus? He said, Jesus was black. And he was smiling. I said, Rabbi, I said, but why don't y'all tell people the truth? He smiled at me and looked me square in my eye. He said, Pastor Bruce, if I told the people the truth, I would cease to be a rabbi. That's what he told me. Did, did you finish that one? That one was finished? That one was finished? Okay, give me the name. Okay. All the early icons of Mary and Jesus were black with African features. All of them, saints. Next slide. This is one of the early icons of the call of the Black Madonnas. Spain, Poland, Czechoslovakia, Russia, you find Jesus and Mary, they were all depicted as black. Next slide. Every morning the popes get up and they pray to the statue of a black Mary and a black Jesus. Next slide. You can see Jesus with the nappy hair. Am I blocking? Am I? Oh, y'all can see over there? Are y'all watching over there? I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Next slide. Black Madonnas. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. All these are the early icons of Jesus and Mary. Next slide. In foreign countries. Next slide. Next slide. 
Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, saints. These are the pictures that we grew up with with Jesus in the little storybooks and the Sunday school lessons and the Sabbath school lessons. This is what we grew up with. Next slide. Nobody black. White angels, white disciples, white Jesus, everything. That affected your mind whether you believe it or not. Next slide. Now this picture is very interesting. You got the little white children are the closest to Jesus. The black child is on the outside, even of the dog. The dog is getting more attention than Jesus, than the little black child. Saying something, this, but this was common stuff. This is, it shows you the mentality of what you're dealing with. It's common. You were nothing. You were not even important to Jesus. That's an insult. Next slide. But here the real Jesus. Jesus didn't, can you go back? Can you go back, sis? One. Jesus didn't, didn't look like this. Now move forward. Next slide. Jesus more than likely looked something like this. Next slide. This is the picture that we grew up with for real. That book in the Desire of Ages, that, that, that's, that's one of the pictures that was there. Next slide. But this is what the Hebrews actually look like. Next slide. A gold coin in the British Museum, we're just about finished, minted by the Roman Emperor Justinian II, 705 to 711 AD. This coin depicts Christ as an African with tightly curled woolly hair. Hit the slide. Next slide. This is that coin. On one side it says Emperor Justinian on the right. On the other side of the coin it says our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. With the pelvic coin, tightly curled hair. Next slide. The Cambridge Encyclopedia wrote concerning this coin. Whatever the fact, a coin places beyond dispute the belief that Jesus Christ was a Negro. And they don't even, we don't, we, we don't that, that's a made up name. We were never called Negroes. That's a name they gave us. We were not Negroes, but that's what they called you. Next coin, next slide. An early catacomb painting of Christ and his disciples uh, gathered for the Eucharist or the Last Supper. Let's see what it looks like. They were all black. This was found in a cave in Jerusalem. People hide your stuff from you because they don't want you to know the truth about your history. And they ostracize me because I tell the truth. Next slide. This picture, a nun is holding this picture. Hit the next slide. A nun is holding this picture. This picture was taken out of southwestern Turkey, and tradition says this is the church. Remember when Jesus told John to take care of his mother? Amen. Tradition says that Mary, the mother of Jesus, went to church in this particular church here in southwestern Turkey. They had this statue, and one of the scholars that I know personally, 
he went to this place and he was about to take the picture and the nun said, no, you can't take this picture. You can't take a picture in here. He said, madam, can I please? She said, well, come outside right quick. He took the picture. This is the picture of Mary and Jesus in the church where Mary was supposed to have been the mother of God. So if in that situation, Mary and Jesus are black, I don't know what else to say, saints. Next slide. We just about, we, I think this may do it. This is another picture of Jesus hanging on the cross being black. He was not white. This same Jesus which you saw going to heaven is coming back in like manner as you've seen him going to heaven. Next slide. This is that old picture, 1,800 years old, the oldest Christian church in the world, shows the disciples, all of them being black, Jesus included. Next slide. Hotep. Hotep, you know, in the Jewish community, they, what, do, what, do they, what do the Jews say when they greet each other? Shalom, right? Well, did you know Africans have a word that we, we greet each other? We say hotep. That means peace. When I go to an African place, uh, not African, but when I go to meetings where they ask me to, I said, hotep, brother, hotep, my sister. And I say, I come to you, I, I bring you peace. I come in peace, my sister. I come in peace, my brother. Bless you. And I have some, a few gifts. This is about, this, this completes my um, presentation on what the Jesus looked like according to the Bible and history. Do you have any questions or comments? I thank you for being so patient, Pastor Bond. I thank you for the invitation. You're a brave man. Praise the Lord. Do you have any questions? Anybody have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Well, she was mixed. Ellen G. The question was, was Ellen White, Ellen G. White, black or white? She was mixed. I wish you'd see a picture of Ellen White's brother. He was riding on a buggy going to church. And he looks black as he want to be. Ellen, I, I used to talk to Elder Cleveland. Me and Elder Cleveland used to have good talks. He used to talk to all the students. But I asked Elder Cleveland, I said, Elder Cleveland, I said, was Ellen White, was she black or was she white? He said, well, preacher, uh, well, he said, uh, what they do, he said, they will show you a picture of a father, but they will never show you a picture of a mother. <laughs> Ellen White has some black in her. She was each Dutch Indian also. She had some, she, had, she was mixed. Any other questions? Did I see a hand in the back? Yes, sir. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Oh, well, thank you. God bless you, man. Yes, they were. You never met a black who? Yeah, they're here. They're here. Now, you have what you call Hebrew Israelites. A lot of these people, there are different sects of them who say that they are Jews, but some of them are, are, are violent, and some of them are that you don't know. You be careful because some of them, according to, they're put on the, the government's, um, what you call it? Watch list because they 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 say they're violent, and they're 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 very uh, they're against America. That's what they say. I don't know whether that's true or not, but that's what they say. So you have to be careful. But you have you have plenty of, of black Hebrews in America that are more Jewish than the people. That, do you know that most Jews are atheists? 
most of the Jews that, that America, I, I better say Americans, they, they, the Orthodox Jews are okay, but I mean, they believe in God, but, but the, these, some of these Jews do not believe in God at all. Do not believe in God at all. And see, the only reason that the Jews in, you know how they got in Palestine now, where they are now? In 1947, the Belfair Act, the British government owned, was ruling Palestine. And the Jews, these uh, so-called Jews, were looking for a place for land. They moved four million Palestinians out of their land. And the British government gave it to the present-day people who called themselves Jews. And that's why there's so much fighting going on over there. And the genocide that's going on over there now is sickening. Any other questions? Yes, sir. I did. I talked to him. I'm sorry, sir. Oh, well, thank you, brother. God bless you, man. Right. 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 No. No. We discovered that we, we, we did that this morning. White people didn't come from Esau. This is what some Hebrew Israelites teach. They teach that. But that's not true. White people came from Japheth's descendants way before um, you know, Jacob was born. And it came through mutation of the gene cells that, as the scientists said, you know, this morning. That's how that came about. Lighter skin color came through mutation from the darker skin of people that moved out. Of, when they started migrating out of Africa and went into the, the, uh, the colder climates, that's when you had the situation that you had where they start um, getting light mutated skin uh, conditions. They started dying of rickets and all kinds of other things because they were not getting the vitamin D, the vitamin D3 to be exact. In order to get the, the right amount of vitamin D, you need to be in the sun at least two hours a day. That sun is good for you. Let me tell you something else, saints. Let me stand for this because I've been sitting for too long. Do you know that most, most people that are Melanated. Melanin is something that gives us skin pigmentation. Melanin is produced between the hours of 9 p.m. and 2 a.m. in the morning. Melanin is regulated by the light that comes through your eyes. That's why when you go to sleep, you should sleep in an all dark room with no lights, no TV, no nothing. Because the minute that light flashes in your eyes, it interrupts the flow of the production of melanin. Melanin is at the inception when the egg, when the sperm fertilizes the egg in a woman, when, when uh, intimacy takes place. The cell that is there, is that melan melanin cell is there that regulates every cell in your body. You got melanin in your ear. Melanin is a dark substance. It sits in the back of your brain. It's shaped like a pyramid. It sits in the back of your brain. It's, it's pitch black and it produces a substance called melatonin that gives you skin pigmentation. It also helps you to feel good about yourself. Do you remember uh, seeing this horror picture called, uh, I saw it before I became an Adventist, or I used to watch horror pictures before I became an Adventist. After now, I don't watch no horror pictures. I haven't watched them in 30, 40 years. And I won't, because I know the source of that stuff now. Well, you remember when Jason wore the mask and they had the chainsaw, and when Jason was outside, somebody said, shoo, 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 shoo. You remember that? Y'all remember that? Well, what do white people do when they hear, shoo, 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 shoo. They'll walk out and say, Bob, Bob, is that you? And get killed. 
What do black people do when they hear? Shoo, 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 shoo. No, they don't run first. Melanin helps you to sense things. And black people say, wait a minute. This, man, no, this don't feel right. Mm, no, I ain't going out there. Then they run. It is melanin that gives black people rhythm. Why do you think black people move in the choir stand? And they tell you you shouldn't move. No, that's for people who don't have as much melanin as we have. Haitian people, Jamaican people, people from the Caribbean, black people, African people, we have more melanin than most white people. So that's what makes us move. That's what makes us animated. That's what makes us, pre yeah, and God said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then somebody else was like, and God said that we should be so. No, it's the melanin that, that gives you that, that fire. That's what's different. White people have melanin too. They just don't have as much as we have. Blacks and Latinos, we have melanin. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we're moving all the time. And it's the melanin that makes us do that. So when they come to our church, they say, they're too noisy. No, we're not too noisy. You're too quiet. Because it's the melanin that God gave us that makes us move. That makes us clap and do rhythm clap. So don't be ashamed of your rhythm. <laughs> I had one of my members, Barry, said, Pastor Bruce, you told us on the TV program that you had, said, don't, don't be doing all that moving up. They said, but you, you can't tell us that now because you said it's the rhythm that makes us, the melanin that makes us move. <laughs> so I said, okay, y'all leave me alone. It is the melanin. So what I'm saying, saints, is this. God has blessed you with a rich heritage. I wish I had time, Barry. Maybe I'll come back next time you invite me. I deal with the, the position of the black woman in the relationship. My, my, my. Men, you don't know how God blessed these women. God blessed these women. These women are powerful. And many black men put their foot on their neck and try to keep them down. But you must understand, God never put a woman behind a man. That's another story. Sorry, right, any more questions? No more questions? Then I turn it back over to Pastor, Pastor Bonner. Oh, yeah, I have something I need to give out. Now I'm going to ask you some questions. I got a couple of gifts I'll give away. All right. These are four, I have four tapes, DVDs. If y'all still play DVDs, I got four of them uh, that I have. One is called... Sankofa, and that's a very good, good DVD. It tells you, uh, go back to your roots. I got one that says by James Baldwin that says, I am not your Negro. Then I have one that's called Hidden Colors. This is a very good one. And this one here, I love, this is my favorite. The Philosophy and Opinions of Marcus Masai Gavi from Jamaica. This is a very good tape that tells you Marcus Garvey was, was one of my heroes because of what he did and how he uh, tried to free his people. So I'm going to ask you a question. If you can answer the question, Barry, I don't know how we're going to do this. <laughs> He's going to put that hot potato back in my hand. Okay, let me, let me ask the question and see who can answer it. What was the name? What was the Raise your hand. If, if you, and she'll try to read. <laughs> what was the name of the first pharaoh that I saw that had the hat like this? What was his name? No. No. What was his name? <laughs> well, she, she trying. The first pharaoh... Do you think I you think I should give it to her? She's close. She's close. She's close. Give it to her. His name is Namer. <laughs> she was she had the llama. She she had it, boy. She was trying to get it. Nama, not 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 llama. Which one? Do you, I, you want you want the one of Marcus Garvey? 
Which one do you want, the Marcus Garvey? All right. One of you young people need to get one of these hidden colors. You would love these for the young folk. All right. What was the name of the two children of Joseph and Asenath? What was the name of the two children of Joseph and Asenath? All right, well, she got it. Which, which one do you want? Do you want the uh, Sankofa or you want the Hidden Colors? I got two more. What is this in the brain that's shaped like a pyramid? What is it called? <laughs> okay. Which one do you want, Sankofa? Or I'm not your negro. Or Sankofa, I'm not your negro. <laughs> I, think he was, I think he was referring that to Pastor Bonner. <laughs> Sankofa is a very good one. Trust me, this is your young ladies need to get this. I've been looking at you. I'm trying to give you, I'm trying to make sure you get something from, from the young people. All right, here we go. This is this is the last one here. Now my brain is so tired, I'm trying to think back on. All right. Say that again. Now, see, they can't tell me what question to ask. <laughs> no, okay. Oh, I see. I just heard what she said. I'm sorry. Boy, you got me. You should have put that in my ear. I, I would. I would have had that. That's a beautiful. That's a beautiful question. When Jesus comes back, when Jesus comes back, what color do you think he's going to be? She, she had it first? She had it first? But that's all right. I, I'll, get something, I'll get something for him. Because I saw that young man's hand. I'll get something for him. I tell you, Pastor Barry. Barry, I'm going to send you something for him. Brother, look for it. I'll send it for you, okay? I got something special for you. I'll send it to you, okay? What's that? Oh, now this one. Oh, boy. This, this is a very powerful book. It's called Cure for All Diseases. It's a powerful book. I don't even know what to say to give away this one, Pastor Bonner. You don't know what to do? <laughs> I know what to do. I'm trying, I'm trying to get it. You know what? I know what to do. I'm, I'm going to give this book to your pastor. I usually I give a gift to pastors when I come. I didn't give. I usually do. I give a, I give a gift to the pastors. So I'm going to give this to Pastor Barry Bonner. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And sis, I saw your hand in the back. Give Pastor Bonner your name. I will find you that book and I'll get you one too. I saw what you raised your hand. All right, Pastor Bonner, I'll turn this back over to you. Make sure you see, you see him and give him your name. <laughs> Thank you all for, for coming. I appreciate your coming back. I really do. Appreciate your coming back and sharing time with us. Thank you. Pastor Bonner, I return this back over to you. Amen, 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 amen. Xavier, 
Come, Xavier. John Deacon, Xavier. Let's lift up the AY offering, even offering. All right. Just, just, just hold it right for a minute till they, till they get their money ready. They got to dig deep. Dig a little deep in the storehouse. All right. Okay, you can move. You can move. Thank you, Pastor. We appreciate all of this excellent uh, information, powerful information uh, that we need to know. And uh, we will bring you back. Right, Ebenezer? Yeah. We will bring you back, Pastor. We will bring you back. It don't have to be uh, Black History Month. Black History is every month, every, all year long. All right, so we, we will bring you back uh, this year. All right? Next, next Sabbath, we're going to, we won't have, well, we may have praise and worship, but we, we're scheduled to have special music uh, instead of praise and worship. Uh, special music uh, will be coming from Denicia, uh, a new believer. And the second one will be coming from Sister Isaiah. Sister Isaiah will bring us special music on next Sabbath as we continue our worship service in, in the black history, black history, all right? Lord, it blessed me. Thank you, sir. Let's, let's have a word of prayer. Turn around. Let's have prayer with the offering. Boy, you're getting trained early, son. All right? So let's bow our heads and pray over the offering, Xavier. All right? Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for all my family and friends. Bless these days so of good day at church today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right? All right. There is nothing else that I have to share with you. Just take notice of the announcements in your bulletin, what will happen uh, throughout this month. This month. Uh, just want to let you know in advance, next month, February, I mean March, the end of March, we're going to have a representative from the Southern Union. Our religious liberty leader will come and uh, give us a message as we deal with uh, religious liberty. Religious Liberty. You know, every year we subscribe to uh, Religious Liberty magazine and send it out to key individuals in certain government offices, things of that nature. He will be with us the last Sabbath in March, uh, our assistant uh, our director of Religious Liberty from our union office there in Georgia. Uh, he will be with us uh, next month, the end of March. All right? In the mind. Got great things uh, in store for us for the year 2024. All right, let's stand for a closing prayer and uh, we may be dismissed. If you're able to come on Wednesday night, please come for our. We get into some heavy stuff, the great controversy uh, facing life records will be this coming Wednesday. Let us pray. Father, we're grateful again, we're thankful, and we are blessed to receive uh, information such as we have received this day. We ask in the name of Jesus that you will continue, Lord, to keep your hand upon the Elder and Sister Bruce in a special way. You have used them in time, Pat. You use them mightily today. And again, oh Lord, use them until you shall come in the clouds of glory. That many souls will be saved as a result of a knowledge, the truth that comes from thy word. And we thank you and we praise you. Now, bless us as we approach a new week, a week we knew not know of. So we ask in Jesus' name, go before us, stand behind us, on the sign us, stand under us, and lift us up, we pray, closer to thy eternal kingdom. And when time shall be no more, grant us a place into thy kingdom, we pray. We ask it all in Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you're interested to know why some women have hips, 
you better come see other Bruce while I have hip. <laughs> don't let him get out of here if you don't want to if don't, you want to know. Don't let him get out of here. And you become asking me next week. I don't know. 